Ghost of a Tale is a stealth RPG with a lot of heart, but without enough substance when it counts. The heart is compiled of the story, the atmosphere, the world building, the writing and the characters. Those are the moments when the game absolutely shines and I'm not going to spoil it for you, as figuring those parts out for yourself is the most fun you will have in the game. The art design, the graphics and the soundtrack all supplement the greatness that is hidden in this game, but the gameplay has the before mentioned missing substance. You play Tilo, an adorable mouse who has to find his wife. Everyone around you can easily kill you, which means you need to put boots over your paws and evade the guards. As you make your way through the dwindling heights by walking, running, sneaking, hiding, throwing and jumping, you encounter several characters that are willing to help you for their own agendas. Almost every one of these characters has relevance to the main story and some side quest rewards are necessary for the main quest. These quests rely on great dialogues and welcome to the problem areas of Ghost of a Tale. Pretty much every single main and side quest is a fetch quest. Find the keys, find the treasure, find the beetle, find clothing and while you're at it, find some more keys. Keys for everyone. This is pretty much every quest. Finding over 50 mushrooms that spawn or despawn depending on the time of day, find 10 urns, find a piece of clothing with only one way to do it. You need to kill the enemy, you need to carry a heavier urn to climb up on it and then you need to collect it. No other way is allowed as this is the only grave you're not allowed to climb into. Do you want to know the best part of it all? There isn't a single reward that is actually useful. The reward for that excruciating mushroom quest is bigger ears. Finishing a good quest like lighting 9 candles in a certain order that are divided into two different areas, which makes you backtrack to the start if you screw up, is rewarded with a lamp that never runs out. There are resupplies for your candles and your lamp oil everywhere both of which last a very long time, so there's literally no use for that item. Those are among the few quests that even give you any rewards at all. Usually you just get experience points which help you to level up. Leveling up increases your health which also serves as the stamina bar. The only two moves in the game that require stamina are jumping and sprinting, while standing still and sneaking slowly replenish stamina faster. At the beginning of the game, you have two items you can throw which, by the end of the game, gets increased to a total amount of four throwable items, including the two previous ones. The game becomes so cryptic that you sometimes spend half an hour or even an hour just walking around trying to figure out what you need to do, as the optional hints become pretty insufficient later. Do you want an example? Most side quests are impossible to complete the first time you get them. Collect the remains of dead soldiers. You can complete that 4 hours later because you're missing one stupid medal in a blocked off area. They try to fix this issue by including the blacksmith, the first rat you can speak to. In return for gold that you find throughout the map, he can give you hints, mark items on your maps and if you haven't found them by yourself, sell you maps. You never need to buy them though as long as you explore your surroundings, which you will have to do anyway. The amount of hints you can buy are plentiful at the beginning, but after around 6 hours, the things you can buy from him are either things you've literally already done or they are not existent. In order to help you travel around, you can unlock shortcuts. These are needed. The game starts out small but becomes larger and larger with many interconnecting shortcuts, similar to metroidvanias, that allow you to travel around quicker. This would be awesome but there is a missing feature that ultimately erases accessibility after not playing for a long time. These shortcuts are never marked on your map. So if you are interested in playing the game, be aware that you need to keep playing, otherwise you'll lose track of where is what. As the map becomes continuously bigger, 
Of course there can't be a shortcut to every other area, as designing such a map is an extremely difficult task. Many games, in return, include a fast travel system that allows quick access to the most important areas of the game. GOAT doesn't do that. That creates a whole different layer of problems, but as you can guess, we can summarize this game's main flaws in three categories. Monotony through simplicity, backtracking due to the quest design, and unnecessary time padding thanks to the game design choices. One reason for this problem is that the game takes every single aspect of stealth away once you get armor that makes you an ally to guards, which, of course, also heavily decreases your speed. So if you don't wanna switch your armor around every 5 seconds, you better get used to running slow as shit. As a reward, you can later choose between seeing already obvious traps or making your armor minimally faster. Why won't you give me both, bitch? Time padding. The quests get arbitrarily longer. The amount of items to collect have sometimes just outright bullshit locations. Confusing as hell quest descriptions with no way of looking up the dialogue to backcheck. And also, the main quest starts to rely on side quests. This is another issue as your progress in the main story blocks and unlocks new side quests. The game doesn't tell you when you're supposed to do a quest and when not to. But the most frustrating aspect is your stamina meter. Ghost of a Tale is, in its core, no matter what anybody tries to tell you, a stealth game. So you always avoid enemy contact. So having your health increased with no options for any combat outside of stunning enemies is only useful in the sense that you also increase your stamina, which allows you to move faster. This meter regenerates very slowly. Faster regeneration is limited to sneaking or standing still, both of which you never need or want to do once you figure out how the AI works. This breaks the unintentional, changing flow of the game, which starts from great but simple to bare bones and boring. The AI itself is basic at best. Everything the AI can do is to walk around and attacking. While they spotted you, you can save, change clothing or talk. So it's especially infuriating if the AI bugs out and apparently never stops following you forcing you to reload your save game. You can also only save if you're in a hiding place. Other than that, the AI is only a threat in the first hour when you're not testing your limits. After that, it's like the AI doesn't exist at all unless they bug out again. On the subject of bugs, this game has a lot of them. Whether it be inconsistent death zones with no indication of them, Suddenly all enemies dying at once without you even being in that location or what I would like to call The goal is to blow up a chest with three explosive barrels that detonate if you're being hit. In the meantime, the undead are endlessly spawning and running towards you while two allied NPCs try to fight them off. If you wondered what happens if this timer there runs out? Well, you just die. You just simply die because... Why do I die again? I'm unable to confirm any bugs or glitches like falling through the floor as of version 6.55. Still, there's a lot of work that needs to be done here on a technical level. Like those horrible lags that apply the last values of the camera and they keep applying these until after the lag. Which means you might do a complete 180 whenever the game loads something. And since the game loads several times to simulate a seamless world instead of everything at once, this problem will occur several times. However, I don't know whether or not that was due to my hardware or some software running in the background. But these lags happened to me even when I wasn't recording and they got worse and more frequent the longer I played. That being said, I completed this game within 17 hours because I haven't had a game this well written since Mankind Divided. Though about 8 of which I spent running around trying to figure out the side quests. But as a reward, I suffered through unreasonable time padding, 
I got nothing in return for the time I spent, many quests are just bad and the sudden cliffhanger wasn't nice. It feels like the finale of the game is missing. But obviously I didn't mention every nook and cranny I had with the game. Otherwise we would be sitting here for like six times the length of this video. But a well written game requires a good game from beginning to end. And the extreme simplicity of the stealth mechanics doesn't help. If you're looking for great world building, great atmosphere and great writing, then you will find all of it here. But it's hidden behind a tedious game. This is, hopefully, the first game of a new stealth series that has a much denser world in comparison to many other franchises. But its greatest weaknesses come from the fact that it is trying to be a stealth game at the same time. And while it can work, you need appropriate, extensive level design that doesn't feel restrictive to your natural abilities, of which there aren't enough. 